Hello Williams class. For your science lesson today, the learning objective is, can I understand how tiny details help scientists to better classify living things? Now, I would like for you to take some time in today's lesson to revisit this website, to remind yourselves of Levon Biss's work with living things. So if you remember this website, we did get the chance to explore it. Hopefully you did at home as well. Um, it's a collection of all the living things that he has observed and studied to great detail. So if you click on the link just below here, you'll be able to go back to it to have a little bit of a reminder. And don't forget the options that you have when you are on this website. So if you didn't get a chance to go on the website beforehand, now is a perfect opportunity to. You have the explore button, you can zoom in and out of the living things pictures, you can um, explore, we can go from one living thing to another. His pictures are a really, really interesting insight into living things because he's so good at closely observing those living things. I feel like looking at those pictures is fantastic practice of when you might get the chance in your own lives um, to study living things up close and personal. So it's all in the details. When something very small is shown in a very large image, you can see so much of the tiny details and features that you would not usually get to see. To classify living things, scientists must look further than the obvious details to identify which species they are looking at, or if indeed it is a never seen before species. And remember, when scientists are classifying our living things, when they are putting them into groups, the reason why they look at the tiny details is because it's those details that make one living thing different to another. Because when you think about it, pretty much all living things, apart from trees and plants, apart from them, all living things have a face, they have eyes, a mouth, um, some sort of arms and legs. So if you weren't looking at the little details, you know, what about the patterns on this living thing? It's different to the patterns on that living thing. Even the way their feet look, are they paws or are they hands? Uh, looking at the size of their mouth, the shape of their mouth, their eyes, the color of their eyes. Those really important details is what separates one living thing from another. So it's very important that we, um, try our best to replicate or to do what scientists do when we are studying living things in our very own science lessons and looking at those little features um, that actually do matter the most because if we didn't look at them, then we would start to believe wrongly that every living thing is the exact same to one another. Watch the clip on the Levon Biss website again. So I have highlighted where you can go to do that. If you have seen it already last week, then maybe you want to skip this. But if you do want, again, a bit of a reminder, then you can click on it now. The purpose of looking at these tiny details. So why do we look at the tiniest of details when it comes to living things? With this sort of technology available now, like Live On Biss's website and the way in which he observes living things, so much more can be discovered about tiny species of living things. Livon takes lots of close-up photos and pieces them back together. Have a look at your drawing of a living thing from the previous lesson. So remember in your previous lesson, you were asked to draw a living thing that you either saw on Livon's website or that you've seen in real life or maybe from a picture on Google. Have a look at that picture for me now. And how fascinating is it to see tiny details coming to life in your drawing? So some of you used color to bring out the features of your living thing, a lot of you, you know, made sure to draw the, the pattern of the, of the living thing and specific body parts as well. So I found it hugely fascinating to see you do that in your drawing, and I hope you did too. In this way, you are able to better understand the features of living things. If you remember from your last lesson, I asked you to include colour in your drawing. And the reason why I did that is because that is one of the tiny details that can really, really change how you look at your picture and how you look at your drawing. So imagine Levon Biss's website. If his pictures were all black and white, you wouldn't be as interested. And well, maybe, maybe you would be, but I personally wouldn't just because I would rather see a living thing 
as though I'm seeing it in real life. And the way that you see it in real life is in color, not in black and white or in sort of just pencil. Um, so I think adding color is, it's a really fascinating and interesting technique to make your living thing look even more realistic. Now let's see how well you know your living things now. Can you give yourselves the challenge of identifying as many living things as you can from the next slide in one minute? Make sure to write them down on your marks. Get set, go. Here they are, you have a minute, off you go. Pause this video, time yourself for a minute and name as many living things as you can. So how did you do? You can see here, there are some that we should know off the bat. So we have a little child, which would be a human. You have um, a puppy or a dog. You have a ladybird. Lots of different living things there that we can identify quite easily, but there are a couple there that might take you a bit of time. So my trick is when it comes to identifying these living things is to always identify the ones that you can find immediately, the ones that you can find identify immediately. And then, go back to the ones that you find tricky and see if you can identify those. Now, the reason I have asked you to identify these living things is because this will pretty much be our last lesson, really, really looking at living things. We are moving on to a new chapter in our topic. So because of that, I thought, let me just test William's class. Let me see how well they've been paying attention and to see how well they can identify um, the living things, because we have had the chance to look at some, um, so I just thought it'd be good practice. So well done for those of you participating at home and in school. The thought process behind classifying living things. Remember, ask yes or no questions. Now this is the best way to identify features that make living things unique and easy to classify, to group, to sort, to categorize. Asking yes and no questions is the easiest way because you have a very straightforward answer. Yes or no questions will eliminate or get rid of the wrong living things and then lead you to the correct living thing. So it will lead you to the living thing that you have been wanting to identify from the very beginning. The reason why we don't ask any other types of questions is because if you were to ask a question that did not have a yes or no answer, it would be very, very tricky to then identify your living thing because it would get a little bit confusing and you wouldn't really know where to go from there. So for example, if I was to ask you, where does my living thing live? You could say underwater, you could, but then if you were to ask a question as specific as, does my living thing live underwater? You could then move along a lot quicker. You could progress with your thought process a lot faster to then identify your living thing. So that's a little reason as to why we don't ask questions apart from our yes and no questions. Even though other types of closed questions get you the answer, they would get you the answer a lot slower. So just for time's sake, um, yes and no questions are a really good direct way of getting to know the living thing that you would like to identify. Now, your three tasks for today are as follows. Task number one, you are going to be creating a branching database that will identify all living things on the slide with all the living things pictures. So if I bring your attention to this slide over here, pause the video and then have these living things available and you have to create a branching database that will then lead you to every single one of these. Once you have done that, task number two is to include the following vocabulary in your branching database. So once you've finished your branching database, see if you can include the three key words, my son, your son, habitat, invertebrate, mammal. Fantastic. And then task number three, with somebody in your family, you are going to play a game of guess who. So one of you asks the other yes and no questions until the other person either gives up or correctly guesses the living thing. So for example, person A could ask, does my living thing live underwater? And then the other person says yes. So you keep asking these yes and no questions until you either give up or your adult gives up 
or you correctly identify the living thing. So have a go at all three tasks if you can. Um, that's all from me for your science lesson, Williams class. Fantastic work listening today. And I hope you enjoy your three tasks. I'll see you very, very soon. Stay safe. Bye.